Hey, welcome back to the podcast. So excited that you've joined us for Home Sweet Homecast this week. We are jumping in to uh, pricing strategies for sellers in this crazy market that we're in. But before we get into yes, that, mom, we are. mom, how are you? How's it feeling? How's it, uh, how's it been going in the real estate market these days? Oh my goodness. It is like heating up. Um, everything is really, we can tell the seasonality is starting to set in. Yeah. And uh, we've had properties with multiple offers and buyers are coming out of the woodwork and getting used to these interest rates. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's heating up again and it's starting to have a little bit of a feel of um, 2022, just a little bit. Wow, it's bold. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to put it out there. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Well, we've got some stats to back that up um, that, that really kind of show us that the market is, in fact, heating that up. We'll get into that in a little bit. And before we get into that, though, let's just talk about, you mentioned 2022. So, like, what was 2022? For anybody who's hibernated last year, what was 2022? <laughs> and uh, why was that so significant? And how does this differ? Uh, how does this new market differ from that? So, um, 2022... We had a huge market shift in July of 2022. So before July, um, we were having, and all into 2021, back that far, we were having 18 to some areas had 25% home price appreciation. So prices Gosh. were just soaring. They were going up so much. Can you believe it was that much? Isn't that it's crazy? insane. In, in, yeah, in it's a year? Believe. Like, yeah. Yeah. Especially when you think that, you know, the average... Um, home price appreciation yeah. throughout history is around 4%. Yeah. So yeah, just absolutely amazing. But the perfect storm, that's a part of the perfect storm here because when we had combined interest rates going up so fast from like, what was it? 3% to, I think you it know, got down to 2.7 overnight. Yeah. Oh, I mean, sure. Yeah. That was huge. Yeah. 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 So we had such a huge, you know, rapid incline on that um, between that and the fact that we had had two years of 18 to 25% appreciation. So the prices were soaring. So it just really scared off a lot of buyers. Um, so in July, we really noticed that everything changed. The market started kind of grinding to almost like a little bit of a halt or a pause, you could say. And people started just kind of saying, hey, I'm out. So buyer demand really went down and we started noticing that properties that normally wouldn't sit on the market began to sit. Yeah. And we started having days on market increasing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we also noticed that the properties used to the properties that even needed some work were still flying off the shelves. So properties then that needed work or that weren't pristine or updated or were in different kinds of neighborhoods that weren't as popular. Sure. Those properties started being really the ones that set for, for yeah. sometimes up to 60 days. Sure. Heck yeah. I mean, I've seen 150 days for some of those properties these days. So yeah. 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 Almost, almost a full six months for a few mm. of them. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I so mean, we noticed that. Yeah. We also noticed price changes, you know, yeah. price changes started to be like huge. We hadn't yeah. had hardly any price changes. And then we started noticing tons and tons of price changes. Yep. Yeah, I one of my favorite uh, economists talks about he was so excited when the days on market just for to get back to a normal market. He was so excited when the days on market uh, got above the age of a teenager. He was like, that was such a big oh, win funny. for him for it to get above that because it was like, okay, now there's a chance at normalcy because before there just mm -hmm. wasn't. <laughs> yeah, no, before you had to like catch it before it went on the market right. and pay fifty thousand over, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so that was. It was kind of a pause. You could say it's kind of almost like a pause in the market. So, and the market started kind of slowing and um, we just noticed a lot less sales. So that kind of happened throughout the rest of the end of the year and then into January. And then we started no noticing that we started having our wonderful seasonality starting to kick in. So, you know, as the flowers start blooming and the temperatures getting warmer. And of course, when we do daylight savings time, it seems to kick in for people. Hey, this is the year I'm going to want to move. Better mm. get after it. Yeah, sure. We also had, you know, buyers got used to, they got accustomed to the the interest rate. Yeah. So it had been, you know, we've now been in this is increased interest rate now for 
I guess it's been more than six months. Mm -hmm. So people have become more used to that. Yeah. So we've noticed, you know, just in the past month from, uh, you know, February to March, we had a 1% increase on pricing. So prices went up 1% from February to March. And then the average sales price went up $7,000 from February to March. Right. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was substantial. We're going, starting to go up again, which is what we do every year. Sure. Um, on sales and on pricing. And then also recently, um, I ran some numbers and the same nut we right now have the same number of new listings on the market that we did in February of 2022. Wow. So that's interesting, isn't it? Because even though we have the same number of listings yep. we had last year in 2022, yep. our days on market are two times greater yep. than what they were last year. Yeah, And that just, that shows you the effect of an interest rate. I mean, that that's, it's, it's buyer demand getting quelled. I mean, it's what that is. That's because the in inventory has remained the same. Like that's what that means. That's just crazy to me. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. It is. Yeah, a wet blanket just got put on all the bars. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is also mm -hmm. like, just for any sellers, like this is still a really great time to sell, but for what it's worth, oh, like yeah. the second that um, like uh, in rates, I mean, I think r when rates like get below five, honestly, or even close to five, um, I think that that's going to be the number that like moves people from, even if they got the 3% rate or the 3.5 mm -hmm. or whatever it was, five is close in my mind enough for them to still make that jump uh, and, and move. I just think when that dip, like my point is saying the second that, that, that thing that is quelling demand is out of their way, all of it's yeah. spiking back up. Like we have not solved the problem, if you will, which is low mm -hmm. inventory. Like that was the exactly. issue. <laughs> so. Exactly. Yeah. And we're going to have that for several, several years. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it, and you know, because, because we have houses sitting on the market longer, we yeah. now are, sto are stocking up a little more of an inventory on the market. Yeah. So we actually have two times more homes on the market yeah. right now than we did in 2022. Well, and, and for me, like, you know, on that, in that same vein of just like inventory, like I honestly am, am really enjoying working with investors right now because mm -hmm. it's just like investors are kind of the people who are taking the houses that are sitting for 150 days, yeah. 180 days, and they're turning them around to something that, that, comes back into the market as, as usable and things people like again. <laughs> and especially mm -hmm. we'll, we'll talk about affordability and stuff, but especially for buyers when it comes to uh, just the median price of homes in our area has gone up so much because of that appreciation. Yes. mentioned. Like it's just so nice to have homes that filling that gap that investors are doing great mm -hmm. jobs. Some investors are doing great jobs with. Um, so it's for me, I've enjoyed that part for sure. Cause it feels like we're like, even though it's just one more house and it takes us like three months to flip it or whatever, it's like we're at least they're doing something to help the inventory problems. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. That's a great point. Cause there are those kinds of deals out there. Yeah. So you won't get the investor value that you got maybe several years oh, ago, for Sure. Yeah. but you will get, you will get some value. And you'll still have a crazy yeah. appreciation just because it's DFW. Yeah. I mean, that's just the nature Abs of this area. So absolutely. But yeah, so yeah, I mean, mom, sure. mom pulled a lot of stuff. She mentioned seasonality, so we're experiencing that right now. Um, we mentioned this in a couple podcasts ago, but uh, rental rates, are just for so you know about this area, are still about $200 mm -hmm. per month lower than purchasing now. Now, I would make the argument, because uh, I think a lot of people say, okay, cool, it's cheaper to rent. Don't forget about appreciation. Appreciation makes up a big right. difference uh, over the year. Um, for that thing. So th that isn't the whole story. I just want to make sure that's clear. Um, but, and then it's DFW. I mentioned this just a second ago. Like we just still have so much, pe many people who like not just Texas, but so this many. area, like they, it's uh, this, this stat is insane. 3,800 more people move to Texas than leave every week. I mean, that's a staggering yeah. number. Um, and I think we, we heard a statistic, this was probably about two months ago, so we'll have to check back up on it. But about two months ago, a statistic that came out that said that it was like in DFW specifically, we have like four or 500 a day of that number, like that it was, it was crazy. So, um, yep. Yep. anyways, we're it's, still it's, very popular. Yes. It's a good area. Uh, Zillow uh, ranked us as like, I think the top, uh, uh, hottest market in 2023 or something like that too. So, I mean, it's just. Mm -hmm. Anyways, we're, we're killing it over here. Um, but so multiple offers have slowed though, uh, just in comparison to 2022, uh, and mm -hmm. appraisal guarantees aren't a very common thing anymore. 
Um, usually it's more of a appraisal, and sorry, appraisal waivers really have vanished um, unless it's just the right kind of house. Uh, appraisal guarantees still kind of can happen, but they're not going to be as crazy up to, you know, 30, 50 K like they were in 2022. So it's, it's uh, right. pretty wild. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're seeing a little more partial appraisal guarantees yeah. instead of a full appraisal guarantee. So, yeah. yeah. That's making the difference for sure. Yeah. But let's jump into pricing. So, I mean, that's, that, that brings us yeah. to pricing because for us on the real estate side, on the real tour side, um, we've noticed that like when it comes to listings, like pricing is the way you crush this market. Like pricing is the way that a seller wins in this market. You price it right. And because of that, it'll drive a frenzy and you get more money than you were going to get otherwise because you priced it right from the get go. So we've got a lot of great hacks to that. But um, mom, talk to us about pricing and, and just for you what that has been uh, so far. Yes. So, you know, pricing, we still want to be cautious with pricing and we want to be make sure we're pricing competitively yeah so as we have more properties kind of hanging out on the market we want to really make sure that we analyze those properties we see how the subject property the one that we're going to list or the one that you're going to sell we want to see how that one compares mm -hmm. to what else is on the market yeah. and then you got to make sure that we price a little below whatever is comparable and competitive with us on the market. Now, that way, even though we have low buyer demand, the next buyer who's ready to buy, they come into the neighborhood, they see the two houses, they go see them both. They see that yours is a little bit lower priced, still a great value and comparable. So yours is going to be the one that'll get the offer instead of the other one. When we have such limited buyers coming in, we want to make sure that yours is the one that gets picked. Yeah. And I mean, uh, for me, I see this uh, working with first time home buyers, like just in this particular part of DFW, mm -hmm. more of the Arlington, Fort Worth, uh, you know, kind of side of the town. Um, man, they, you know, I can, I can tell you because I'm work, I've seen them all <laughs> because inventory again is low. Right. Uh, the prices that are in that price are that are, you know, first time home buyers range are usually between like under 300, sub 300 kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you just go to 315, um, oh my gosh, yeah. does, does the, the game change, uh, of what's available and what's out there. And so, um, mm -hmm. my point in saying that is that, uh, you never want to like, you know, if your home's worth 325, you don't want to price it at like 299. We're not talking that huge of a price right. difference at all. But if you were at 305, I mean, if you got down to 299 and you just sacrificed on paper that those set six K, uh, what mm -hmm. you will get in a frenzy of just grabbing some more of those buyers in a different uh, area. I mean, it could be huge for what you gain on top of that, because even if those first time home buyers can't afford it, um, the people, the people who were going to afford it regardless, uh, see, oh my gosh, there's multiple offers. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. demand is crazy for this house. I need to go big for this. And so that's what that's, it's a psych, you're playing psychology, you're playing, you know, uh, I've got, you know, you want to be in control of the cards. You want to be the person who's saying, yeah. I've got the cool thing, you know, the cool toy, uh, everybody else wants it. Right. So, right. You know, that's, that's, that's exactly right. And, you know, you much rather have um, come out of the gate with a tad bit lower price yep. to create that frenzy than you would to do price changes. Right. Because as you start to do price changes, if you didn't hit the number quite right and you're having to do price changes, that's going to make it where you, overall you're going to get less price on your sale. Well, yeah. And you've got a so, great phrase for this, yeah. about days on market. Like what's your phrase about days right. on market? So days on market is like acid yeah. to a listing. So right now, you know, it, last year at the beginning of the year in 2022, it was common. It was almost expected that as soon as you put a house on the market, it would be sold by Monday. <laughs> right. After, after it goes through one weekend. Right. That was, yeah. that was the way it was. Yeah. Multiple offers sold. Right. So we don't have that going on right now. It is usually taking occasionally you'll get a house that will get multiple offers over a weekend. But typically it's taking about eight days, yeah. seven to eight days right now. So within a seven to eight day period, you'll still get multiple offers. They just won't be so many. You'll get like maybe three to right. five multiple offers. Right. So that's kind of what we're seeing right now. So it's taking about a week. So you want to be the best position, positioned house on the market for that week. That's what that's what we want to see. Yeah, that, that's and a big when deal. you, 
Yeah, it is. It's a really big deal because you, you get so much momentum. You get that frenzy. You get to decide as the seller what the terms are going to be. You, they, the competition pushes up the price. Um, those buyers feel blessed. They mm-hmm. feel lucky that yep. they got under contract yep. with you because yep. they knew other people wanted yep. your house. And they appreciate it so much that they are solid. I mean, they yes. are in the game. Yeah. So you, you tend to not have so many dropouts yeah. because with low buyer demand, that means there's low buyer confidence. Yep. And when there's low buyer confidence, well, guess what happens? Yep. Buyers get kind of shaky. Yep. So they'll drop out of a deal. Yeah. And that's the worst thing for a seller for a lot of reasons. You know, you were excited. Yes. Heck, if you're trying to find your next place too, I mean, that can yes. mess up that deal that you maybe are already under contract for. I mean, if you're playing it that way. Um, I think, I think the, you know, the, so what's the trade off, right? Like, cause in the previous market, you could just list your house, uh, you know, and, and it would go like, unless there was something like fatally wrong with it. Um, yep. but you know, you just list it in this market. Here's the deal. Y'all to put yourself in that driver's seat, like we're talking about, which will net you almost always much more than you were going to get mm-hmm. netted otherwise. Um, you got to do a little more work on the, on the, on the, on your side of the game, which isn't as fun, which isn't as easy. It's just the market though. So you know, <laughs> what's the, what's the phrase? Like, don't shoot the, the mailman or whatever. Um, hey, don't <laughs> the shoot mess- the messenger the messenger. Yeah. 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 Uh, Cause that's just, that's what this is. So I mean, for what that, what that means for sellers right now, um, is, is your home's got to be in good shape. Um, you've got to do a little more repairs than you were having to do previously. Um, you, you know, uh, talk about my, for me, it's so common just because it's everywhere, especially in our part of the, in, in Texas. Um, but like foundation stuff, like talk about that for what mm-hmm. sellers need to know about that. Yeah. So, so we are recommending to a lot of our sellers now that in order to be the very best product on the market, when you go on during that first week and to compete really well, to go ahead and get pre-listing inspections done. Yeah. That way, you know what items there are that might come up. You're not surprised. You get con- you get to control if you want to go ahead and repair those items, or yep. if you want to plan on offering an allowance for something. So it puts the drive it puts you in the driver's seat again. So we're we're advertising or we're we're suggesting those pre listing inspections. Also, if you've had ever, ever had foundation trouble or think that you might have it, we're going ahead and getting foundation inspections coming in. So that way, you also can make sure that you are driving that. You get mm-hmm. to choose which which inspection report we're going to go with you know like because usually people get several foundation companies to come in they all tell you something different right <laughs> so that way you get to kind of be again in the driver's seat yeah. deciding yeah. what we're going to go with and how you're going to address that um the other thing is is that um you know we just really believe in staging mm. i mean that's, mm. that come is such now. a big deal right now come on because, you know if you go into a house and it's vacant, it has no personality and yep. it smells funny. Yep. Come, and then the next house you go into smells wonderful yep. and there's music and it looks great and it's been staged. Yep. Guess which one they will pay more for. Yep. They're going to yep. pay more for the one that's staged. We found that, you know, you, typically if you just put a 1% of the sales price, if you put that money into improvements and yep. staging and maybe some landscaping, 75% of the sellers that did that, they saw anywhere from five to, can you believe this, Jackson? 15% it's insane. increase in the money that they got. I mean, and that's like, like this is exactly, this is an example of why you got to keep your eyes on the prize, y'all. Like, like yeah. you, were, it's yeah. going to, it's going to not be fun when you are feeling like you got to do more repairs, like you're spending more money in the front end, but mm-hmm. here's the deal. You're not spending that just to spend it. Like we're not, you know, as your as if we were your realtors, we would never ask you to just spend money frivolously. It's spend this because we believe, and we have seen through past mm-hmm. experience that you're going to get more than what you're putting in here because of what you're putting in. So right. it just, it's, right. it's that, it's that upfront, you know, cost, but it, it comes back almost always in spades. Mm-hmm. So just yeah. <laughs> it trust does. the process. <laughs> yeah, it really does. You know, there's, there's a lot of people out there, especially in the iBuyer times before, yes. you know, COVID and all that, that they really wanted the convenient sale. And that's what they wanted. Yeah. And you can go for that now too. You can also do the convenient sale and not do all these things, but you really have to be very realistic with your price because you, in this market, if you want to have a convenient sale and your house is not where it needs to be yet, 
then you're going to take a bigger hit well, in that's, what you make off of it. You're paying for that convenience. Exactly. Like you are going to lose. I mean, I've seen like averages of that. I mean, for sale by owners are the same thing. Um, it, nothing against that. Like, but you are paying, uh, you know, you may be saving yourself that realtor fee, but almost always you're losing up to 15 to 20% of what you could have gotten out of that deal um, mm -hmm. to save yourself the three to 6% for the first sale by owner or the I buyer, like the same kind of thing. Like um, it's, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's just, I, but I get it. I mean, there is something to be said yeah. for less work. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not knocking it. It's just, yeah. just recognize you are paying for that convenience in, in your mind. Right. Make sure you're right. aware. I'm not going to make as much money to make it more convenient for me. Like that is a trade off mm -hmm. you're making when you do. Stuff yeah. Like and if you're okay with that, I mean, there's situations for that, right? Yep. That that's appropriate. Yep. There's situations where that makes sense. Just make sure that you're, you're really realistic with the pricing because what will happen otherwise is that if you price it too high for the work that's needed, then it's going to sit. Yes. And the longer it sits, like I said, that's acid to your sales price. So the longer yep. it sits, and you start doing price changes, that's kind of eroding yeah. away the money that you're going to get on a final yeah. offer. And buyer confidence. I mean, it's the same thing. I, yeah. Why yeah. is, you know, the first thing I see, especially in this market, when something's above, I mean, 35 days on market, the first mm -hmm. thing I think is, okay, what's the deal? So I go looking, you know, on the yeah. on the seller's disclosure, I go looking in the description, I call the agent, I say, hey, like, what's the deal? You know, tell me about this property. Um, you know, there was one I saw that was, it was a great property and it went under contract. Um, but it, I could tell why it got days. It was a, it had this funky enclosed fireplace that had been converted into like a, an outdoor closet. And it was, it was oh, interesting, yeah. but it was like, okay, this is the thing. <laughs> like this is, it's, uh, you know, any new girl fans out there, this is, it's like Pogo, like, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's what they call that. It, it, it's, it, this is its thing. This is its weird little like hiccup. So, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And then there's usually something like that. There's something. So, yeah. So, so, you know, you just want to make sure that you think all that through and, and choose the route that makes sense for you. Staging really does add to your value if you can be at a place where you can do that. So yeah. we recommend that, you know, there's all kinds of things you can do. You, you freshen up the landscape, make sure you trim your grass, plant fresh flowers, you know, make the front porch look great. Yeah. Um, the cleaning, the smell, the music, I mean, all those things are great and they really do help. Um, also, you want to just make sure that you make it really easy for agents to show your home. So whatever you can do to really make it easy. We usually recommend that people basically take the weekend off. You yeah, know, that they right. go somewhere else, <laughs> right. go to movies, go to the park, go stay with some relatives yeah. and just take the first weekend off and just let your house really show. Yeah. Yeah. Full access. I think the other thing to mention here too is that for what it's worth, there is a middle ground too between like the full convenience and, you know, going above and beyond to get your price. You know, there are some things like um, sellers paying points towards uh, buyers having the ability to buy down their interest rates, like a two to one buy down, um, mm -hmm. or even helping them, you know, with first time home buyer programs. There's some other things that we have access to, um, like a program called Homeward, um, which really lets people, uh, you know, for a fee, um, buy and sell very conveniently and very effectively. And so, um, but my point is like, there are things where you can still make a good chunk of money on your home um, by, you know, putting up more money up front rather than doing all the repairs, doing all that kind of stuff. Um, now, if you do all three, I mean, y'all, it, it, it helps. <laughs> um, but yeah. also know that you don't have to, you don't have to go above and beyond uh, and you also don't have to forsake all the money. There's kind of a middle ground too, where you can kind of uh, mm -hmm. pick what you need to do in there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just important to be reasonable. You're not going to get the top dollar number if your house, you know, needs some repairs. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Now, the other thing is, is you want to make sure that you really think through and share with your agent. What are the, what we call peripherals of your property? What are the unseen things, the things that aren't so visual yeah. that would make your property so wonderful yeah. for a buyer? Things like, yeah. you know, extra insulation. And, uh, what else, Jackson, or some things? I mean, like my, that. this was always the weird thing. I, we didn't do this when we sold uh, my, my first home because um, it, it was kind of an iffy thing. But what I always wanted to do was I really wanted to highlight my neighbor. Um, like I wanted to yeah. just like, say, yeah. hey, if you buy this house, you get the best neighbor you ever met in your life. Um, because, I mean, not only was he, you know, so kind and so caring, but 
um, he was the guy who like literally he'd have a toolbox in his hand all the time, mm -hmm. like taken off down the road just on a walk. And he knew like somebody in the neighborhood had called him to say, hey, like, will you come help me do something? And he was like, yeah, I'm there. Um, and wow. it's like I always wanted to highlight him and sell him because I felt like he was such a huge, you know, thing about that house. That house had a lot of great stuff. Um, but like he was just such a great you know, part of being in that area was like, you're going to be taken care of. You have access to every tool you could ever need, <laughs> like just next door. And he will freely give that to you, whether he knows you or not. Like I always wanted to do that. That's not necessarily one of the best peripherals. Cause that can be kind of a funky thing. Cause everybody, you know, <laughs> interacts with other people differently. Right. Um, you never know. Yeah. But, I mean, uh -huh. you know, peripherals could be, uh, you know, a great, I mean, this is kind of the, you know, the, as far as realtors go, they always kind of, if a good realtor knows like the best local Chinese spot, um, you know, yeah, to, to get exactly. Chinese food, um, or, yeah. and, and the best thing on their menu, you know, or the local dive mm -hmm. bar, um, yep. that's, that's fun to hang out with, or, you know, dry like, cleaners. Yes. Yeah. You know, any that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, you know, this, uh, you know, who was it that I just saw somebody, um, you know who it was, <laughs> it was, uh, uh, South Adams, um, uh, the mm -hmm. owner there, uh, she has this incredible, manual <laughs> to the yeah. home in yeah. one of her drawers and it's this fully flushed out like hey here's who i call for this hey here's who i call for mm -hmm. this yeah. um she's so things like yeah, that are helpful amazing. to do yeah um she said that she, her long guy uh gosh he like he undercharges his incredible services kind of things so, like even that was a peripheral mm -hmm. that hey this yep. you know gets you access to this you know great lawn service that saves you some money um it, it's just kind of the it's the mm -hmm. It's yep. things people won't see just naturally with the home um, that you right. have you have loved about the home, um, yep. whatever that would be. Yep. So. Yeah, that can actually sell. That can really sell a home and can sell mm -hmm. it for a big price too. Yeah, because so I mean, you know, y'all yep. like marketing is storytelling. That's that's the nature yep. of it. You're telling the story, and any details you can add like that that tell the story of the home. I mean, that's only going to add value, add you know ambiance, um, add add stickiness, you know, like hookiness, um, uh, to mm -hmm. it. So yeah, it's just, it's, it's always a win. Is that a word? It is now. Hookiness. Yeah. <laughs> it was, when I said it, I was like, that's not a bad word, right? Like, it was just like that. Good. <laughs> it's like on the, on the border. Of, yeah. It's yeah. real dang close. I totally agree with that. <laughs> I was like, we're going right. to go for it. <laughs> just go. So speaking of sayings, you know, that's a new, new word, right? Yep. So speaking of sayings, um, when it comes to your offers, when you start getting offers in the door. So we want to really make sure that you look at all the offers. Yeah. And in particular, there is some truth to this saying that your first offer is your best offer. Okay. So it's not always true, but at least within your first week, your best offer for that week is probably going to be the best offer you're going to get because of the focus of how much attention your property is getting that yeah. first week. Yeah. So, and those are all the buyers that are ready to go and they're strong and they are ready to act. So yeah. that whole thing about, you know, a bird in the hand is better than one in the bush and all that. So it is great. And you want to really work with whatever offer comes in the door to try to make it work for both sides. Yeah. Because if you let that offer disappear or you let that offer, you know, go away because you wouldn't get to a place of agreement, then a lot of times, you know, you're becoming a buyer of your own property. You're buying it back. Right. So, right, right. yeah. So that's yeah. the thing. And, and, a, and a good agent's going to help you look at that real realistically and not get emotional. Yes. About yeah. counter offers and all that. Yeah. I think, I think the, uh, you know, this is, this again just proves the point of that's why you want to come out strong. Like you want to come out yeah. swinging your first weekend on the market. Like that's why the things you can do on the back end before we even ever list your home it just saves it's going to make you that much better and get you that better bigger nicer offer um, mm -hmm. from the get-go and that you know super committed buyer who who's ready and just they were waiting for your home to come on the market like that's what it when we can come out swinging on that first week and that's what that gets yep. us and so that's why we go for it that's right that's why we have a handyman that that's can right. do stuff we have <laughs> yep. a flooring company yep. that can do stuff inspection people roofer. We have all these folks that, um, can step in if they're needed. So yeah. yeah. On top of the people that you have. Too. Yeah. 
And I think, and I think it's a small side note. I mean, this is, this isn't necessarily, I wouldn't say this is drastically important y'all, but like the other thing to consider is backup offers. Backup offers were like yeah. the thing in the, in, in, in 2022, 2021 markets. Um, because it was like your only chance of getting one if a buyer fell through, you know? Um, but you know, backup offers are things to always, if you get somebody who wants to do that or your agent, I mean, your, it, your agent should go, uh, to the say, hey, would you like to consider this? Um, it's not something that's necessarily common practice in a market like this, um, mm -hmm. but it just gives you more certainty because it means that you can sit on, or rather, um, you can ride. You know, let's say you're, you know, two weeks into the transaction with the one buyer, they fall through. If you got that backup offer uh, accepted on that first week when y'all were, uh, when when the energy was, you know, you were, it was your opening weekend, it was full force. If you got that backup offer, you know, in your in your back pocket, um, you aren't having to now be the home that has 14 days on market or more. Mm -hmm. You're still for that buyer. You're still the you're the home that had three days on market or two days on market or whatever it was. So, yeah. And plus, it's such a great place of power for negotiating on your inspection and any repairs. You know, if you've got a backup offer that you could turn to, yeah. you're going to tell your current buyer, mm -hmm. hey, don't ask me for anything or right. for not much because yep. I got another offer here in the yep. wings. Yeah. Yeah. So it just sets you up for success. And that's the goal. The goal with all this is just trying to help you. Um, do mm -hmm. that. And, and one of the reasons we really, again, wanted to do this particular topic right now is that this is like, for, you know, in my opinion, right? Like buyers, the biggest things we have to do is we have to do financing, uh, creative financing options, not necessarily like hard money, more of like uh, what lenders are offering the best programs for people kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. that's one of the best things we can do for them. And then, um, kind of teaching them, uh, about how to buy in this market creatively. Um, I think those are kind of the two big things that I'm noticing with buyer clients. Y'all, with seller, with seller clients, this is the big thing right now. How you price mm -hmm. your home will, I mean, dramatically, you know, I would even say like 80%, 85% affect your experience, you know, <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe 75% and then 10, 10%, you know, 15% of that's going to be your realtor maybe, but it's, it's pricing. Y'all, it's just pricing. Like pricing mm -hmm. is so, so, yeah. so uh, important for sellers like right now. It's, 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 it's yeah. the thing. <laughs> it, it is the thing to get you yeah. the most money on your sale. Yeah. Yep. It is. Sure is. Okay, cool. Well, I think that's all we got then. That's a very natural ending. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think we're at the end. That's right. It sounds like we may be at the end. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, on that point, y'all, thank you for joining us again for Home Sweet Homecast. We continue to be so thankful uh, to just be able to do this. And we continue to love hearing feedback, love hearing your thoughts about what you are, you know, yep. if you're liking this, um, what you're liking about it, how it's been useful. I have loved hearing stories of people, um, you know, going back to our previous episodes and find, you know, buyers in the buyer process are going to our buyer episodes, sellers in the selling process yeah. are, are using as a resource y'all. And that's what this is here for. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's um, exactly what we want to do this for. hundred exactly. percent. So, uh, mm -hmm. hopefully this episode has been the same. Hopefully it's something you can come back and reference and see. Um, but before, you know, if this is, if this has been useful or inspiring or helpful, heck send it to, send it to a friend of yours who you think may be looking to sell sometime soon. Um, who you think like, Hey, they need to hear this because a lot of sellers, we didn't talk about this as much today. Um, but a lot of sellers are still ha are having a hard time adjusting to this new market, uh, because yeah. they got so used to buyers are doing the same thing with interest rates. They got so used to, uh, the mm -hmm. previous way of doing things because all their friends were doing it that way. And, and all in mm -hmm. the market's just changed y'all. The market has just changed. And so, uh, helping them adapt to that is something that we're really having to do as realtors. And so, uh, we would love to help your, your friend, your family member, uh, do the same. So feel free to share this with them. Um, and Please. then just let us know you're watching like comment. Heck, if you got our numbers, text us. Uh, we would just love to hear, uh, what is going on and what you're thinking about this podcast. Cause we're loving it. It's been fun. Absolutely. So yes, absolutely. We'd like to hear from you. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. Well, that's another episode of home sweet Comcast. Hope you have a great week. We'll see you back next week. We'll see you next week.